Hi, everybody. Laura here. So glad you're joining me today. I have a fun project to share. Really, really three-dimensional graphic. Lots of bright colors. I'm using uh, several of the new products that just came out in the Color of Fun release. I've got a standard Nina Solar White. I've got some gorgeous ink colors. Some of these are new. Most of them are new, starting with Duckling. I love to ink blend. You know how I love the ink blend. It's a great way to show off these colors. Next, I'm doing melon. Now, this is a new sponge. And you can see here that around the edge of my sponge, it's really heavily inked. Now, that's going to give you splotchy results. If you're ever having trouble getting splotches, sometimes the problem is an unevenly inked sponge. Or it can also be a heavy hand. Or it can also just be crankiness. <laughs> There's a lot of factors that got you got to be very light and you got to have an evenly inked sponge and you got to be happy about it. You can't be cranky. You cannot get good results when you're cranky. Listen to me. I'm telling you, I've tried. Okay, so the next color is Hollyhock. This is a gorgeous uh, color, new one, and it gr blends great with melon. So this is kind of easy going from duckling to melon to hollyhock. It's a nice, easy blend. And then this one here is an older color. Uh, well, oh, it's going to be one of my favorites forever. Doll pink. I love it. It's kind of a raspberry. And then now I'm going to go into wisteria. This is a, a new purple color. Beautiful, but it's, it's not an easy blend going from a pink into a purple. You have to be real careful. So that's why I'm starting really, really light. You can see here, not going heavy at all. Now, instead of trying to finish off that blend with the purple, I'm going to do the corner in a new cloudy sky color. Love this cloudy sky blue. And then I'll go back in with my wisteria and I'm going to work it. This is my inspiration. I Googled square patterns and this is what I got. And that's, that's my starting jump off point for these colors that I used here. So if you're ever wondering where I get my ideas from, where do I get my color combination ideas from sometimes I just google random things like square patterns because I knew I was going to use this little square die and so I thought I don't know I need a pattern I need an idea of it, something I can do with squares and then it came up these gorgeous colors and so that's now here is the die I'm using it's called game tiles this is so cool and there's a stamp set that coordinates with it but I'm going to live on the edge. I'm going to shake it up and I'm going to just be wild and crazy. And I am not going to use it with the coordinating stamp set. I'm using the die totally on its own to create a cool graphic, colorful pattern. So don't limit yourself with these dies that they have to be used with the stamp set. Try something crazy and use the dies by themselves. Get a little more mileage or like I like to say, get a little more bang for your buck with the dies. You know, dies can be expensive and you can use them for so many different ways. So yeah, we're stretching this game tiles die today and I am die cutting my heart out. I am cranking them. I'm working my biceps. I'm getting toned as I go. I'm breaking a sweat. No, I'm not really breaking a sweat, but sometimes I do break a sweat when I make cards. Mostly it's just stress. Sometimes I get stressed out when I'm making a card. You ever do that? You get stressed out. You're not enjoying it. And I start sweating and there, and it's just, it's good for nothing. So I'm going to die cut this whole panel here of squares until I am completely finished. Now look at this. It's all done. I'm going to adhere this down. I'm using these little mini post-it notes. My kids brought these home from school. They have all these school supplies that they didn't use up during the school year. And so they bring them all home and I'm like, do not throw that away. I will use that. Uh, I ran out of post-it tape and I'm too cheap to go buy some more. So I've been using all these little things I can and, you know, just make it work. So I'm fitting all these squares back in so that they're all lined up perfectly. Now here is a big trick -a -roo. I am getting some press and seal. Now I talked about this last time. I talked about press and steel, how Jennifer McGuire's husband invented it and how it can be so handy with your die cutting projects. And a lot of people asked, how is it handy? I got to see a video showing this. Well, here's an example of how you can use press and steel. When you have intricate die cuts and little pieces that you want to keep in place, you can put down that press and seal and it will hold them all in place so that you can put foam adhesive on the back or even just glue, but you want to keep them all aligned perfectly. This is a great way to use press and seal. Now, I also mentioned in the video that I had never tried press and seal. I just knew it was really handy. Well, sure enough, a couple days went by and I get a box of press and seal. 
I shouldn't say a box, a box full of several boxes of press and seal. That little Jennifer McGuire is one generous little stinker. You got to be careful what you say about it. But anyhow, uh, I'm enjoying it. It is great stuff. And by the way, it's carried. Heidi has it in the Simon store. So if you want to shout for some of those gorgeous new ink colors and you're thinking, you know, maybe you want to give press and seal a try, you can get it in the Simon store as well. It's a one-stop shop there. And so now I'm going to take my cardstock and I'm just press it on. You could probably flip this over, but I'm just not going to take the chance. I'm going to press my cardstock right on top of it. And then when you flip this over, you're going to see the magic. This is so cool how everything is perfectly aligned and held together. Now there was two little squares that didn't make it. And that was my fault. I realized I didn't take the backing off of the adhesive square. Yeah, that was my blunder. Not the press and seals fault. That was my fault. So I'm going to go ahead and put those back into place. And then I'll take this guide off the positive part. And there, look at that. Ah, so gorgeous. So dimensional, colorful. I'm going to trim this out so it's even on all four sides. And then I'm going to pop this up on a card base. And lately, when I've been doing an entire panel like this, I like to use this fun foam. Instead of using several strips of my foam tape, I've been using this fun foam, and it's working really great for me. I like it because it covers the entire panel. You know, I like to save my foam tape now for, you know, smaller images and stuff like that instead of, you know, using it all up, my precious foam tape. And, okay, so now I'm going to emboss a sentiment. This is from the More Sketchy Banners Greeting stamp set. It's an older stamp set, but it's got some great, sentiments on it. The reason I chose this one is because it has a real sleek, modern font to it, which I think paired well with this graphic design. I wanted something that was very clean and simple, kind of a modern feel. And I'm so proud of you is what it says. So I'm going to use a little strip of foam tape and pop this up. So there's a lot of popping up going on here. We've got the panel popped up. We've got the little squares popped up and we've got our sentiment strip pop up. We're popping and we're locking and we're loving it. And this card is finished. I'm going to just trim this up on the edges and we're good to go. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, give that press and seal a try. You're going to love it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.